Hello. Welcome to a review of Pixar's Disney Pixar's Soul. Uh, it's been it's been a while since I've made one of these movie reviews. You know, like uh, or just 2020, man. There's no movies coming out. I mean, I've watched a few. Like I've watched some stuff on Netflix, but it's always like I. There's something about watching a movie on Netflix or on a streaming service where you just, like, forget it as soon as you've watched it. <laughs> Which I suppose also applies to the way I watched Soul, because I certainly didn't watch it in the movie theaters. <laughs> I haven't been to the movie theaters since I saw Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> what a movie to, like, close out movie blockbusters on, at least for this era of time. Whatever, that's a whole different topic. But, uh, Disney Pixar Soul... The, one of the first, like, big new movie releases. The first new big movie release I've seen since this whole... Yeah, since this whole thing started. Uh, and uh, I did not watch it in the theaters. I watched it on Disney+. Plus. But that being said, it was a very, a very good experience. Uh, I've kind of fallen out of Pixar recently. Like, I don't really... What did, I didn't press X on that. I pressed close. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, I thought I, I thought I minused Google, but I guess I closed it. I was gonna Google. I have it up so I can Google things if I need to talk about them. Uh, but yes, yeah, Soul came out this year recently, and I think it's probably one of the best Pixar offerings in a while. My opinion is biased because like I haven't been keeping up with Pixar much. I haven't seen Coco. I haven't seen Onward. I haven't seen Toy Story 4. I haven't really seen, like, uh, what was the last, what was the last new Pixar movie I watched? Probably, like, The Good Dinosaur or something, which is not, that, that one's not even close. Like, that's, like, bottom of freaking Pixar's list. Uh, yeah, hold on. I can look at these. Oh, Incredible! I guess Incredibles 2 is the most recent one that I've seen. But yeah, like, okay, I re this is certainly the best. I think, th for me, this was probably the best Pixar movie of the last 10 years. Looking at this list that I've pulled up on Wikipedia of Pixar movies that came out in the last 10 years, I think this is the best one, at least of the ones I've seen. Uh, at least the best one since Inside Out, uh, for me. Um, and I mentioned Inside Out because this movie feels in a lot of ways like the, uh, the spiritual sequel to Inside Out, which, now that I look at this, they both have the same director, so that's probably not a coincidence. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Inside Out, like, both Inside Out and Soul take re these really complex concepts. Inside Out deals with emotions and memories and mind stuff and soul deals with like existential like soul stuff like life death the meaning of life it's a, it's a movie about the meaning of life which you know you could say oh it's, a, it's about the meaning of life but that's really like that's what the subject is the meaning of life and death and what success is what purpose is what matters in life very existential question if inside out was the movie to make your kids ask questions that they're not go that they wouldn't normally be asking until their teen years then soul is the movie to make your kids ask questions that they normally wouldn't be asking until they were like in their 20s or older it's a very very existential movie and in that way it's like the sequel to inside out because you watch inside out and here's this level of concepts and then you watch soul and here's the next level even of concepts uh and both, both use, portray abstract concepts through very, like, colorful wonderland-y kind of scenarios that make them approachable to kids. But, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if I made a review of Inside Out for this channel, but Inside Out didn't really, uh, I liked it. I liked the concepts, but I felt like the movie did not have a good the, the movie, they never really came up with a solid plot anchoring those concepts. Like, Inside Out has about 30 minutes of story stretched to a movie. And it's stretched by introducing more and more concepts, but the concepts never really cohesively flow together. You just kind of, happy and sad get separated, and then they're just wander, or they get separated from the other emotions, and then they're just wandering through this cartoon wonderland of abstract m metaphors for like an hour. 
and I just, it just didn't really do much for me. Soul, on the other hand, is very well plotted. It's very, it has a great pace. It doesn't linger too long in any one area. You, you can predict where the plot is going to go, but it doesn't, there are some twists and turns that will, if not, they're not going to shock, nothing's going to shock you, but it, it might, like, surprise you or, and, and draw you in. Uh, for reference, Soul is about, uh, that's a man named Joe Gardner, who's a middle school band teacher trying to be an aspiring jazz musician, and then he finally gets, like, a big gig to work with this big lady after this, after he, like, tr tries out with her band, and he's just in the zone on the piano. I love how they display, there's, like, this a theory, they really focus on, like, characters getting in the zone, and that's, like, tied, that's one of the abstract concepts they work with, is it's this, like, blue magic, like, you're just, you're in the zone, you know, you're in the zone, and that's, that's kind of, like, an easy, that's how he ends up transferring between, like, almost the fantasy world and the real world at certain points. It's a bit hard to explain without going into spoilers, but right after he gets this big break, uh, something happens to him that, uh, let's just say, leads him to have to consider what his life is, was, what death would be, what comes after life and before life, like that, the great beyond and the great before, they call them in this movie. And he ends up exploring these concepts. They're a very interesting story. One thing that, that I liked about it, a way that it kind of twisted compared to Inside Out, is Inside Out, you're thrown into this fantasy realm where happy and sad are, and then they just spend the next hour exploring that area. And it's, it's like the concepts are interesting, but the metaphors don't go any deeper. Soul doesn't actually spend that much time in its great beyond, great before fantasy realm. There's a brief bit at the beginning where they're tr where he's traveling through it and he meets this other soul who's, she's got her whole thing going on and the, she's got a whole nother thing going on. And they, the two of them kind of team up to like solve each other's problems essentially. And I really, what, what I, I like the fantasy realm when they use it. But about second act into the movie, you the two of them end up back in the real world, but in a different way than you would expect. Kind of body swap comedy-ish. And I really liked that part of the movie, too. I, li I felt like that's what kept it interesting. You're not lingering in these one this fantasy realm or lingering in this real world. We're kind of hopping back and forth and seeing different sides of things, nothing's quite as you'd expect it. Even the, you know, the standard messages at the end of the film that, you know, you give to kids are not quite what you'd expect. They're a lot more mature, they're a lot more thoughtful, they're a lot more, uh, deep, uh, I guess. It's, a, it's kind of a simplistic word, ironically enough. Um, but it's just really good lessons. I don't know. I don't I don't even know if they're like lessons for kids. They're more like lessons for adults. This is one of those Pixar mo if Pixar movies for adults, which honestly I feel like they really haven't done in a while. I mean, I look at their stuff from the last 10 years and it's like, "Oh, Cars 3, oh, Finding Dory, oh, Good Dinosaur. That's made for babies." Um I really did not like the Good Dinosaur. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I like how the plot never quite sticks it. It's very flowing. It's very improvisational and dynamic. It actually, it kind of fits the jazz. That's the other, there's two elements of this. There's the, like, existential stuff, and there's the, like, jazz element. Uh, the soundtrack is very jazzy. The, uh, there's these ethereal beings that sort of run the, like, fantasy realm that are, like, almost like how, a ca how the characters look in, like, Super Paper Mario, where they're, like, these, like, they have very clear outlines and they're like these 2D figures with very clear outlines, except the beings in these realms are like just the outlines. So they're like these lines that form shapes and they sort of, the lines like bend and move around to like, for, like move these kids. They're very fluid. It's very fluid, but in a sort of orderly way, which kind of contrasts with the more chaotic jazz improv style of the where the actual plot goes and the feelings of the main characters. And even the soundtrack is like, there's there's this one, one of the ethereal beings is in charge with keeping, like, count of the souls, and he notices that something's, like, up when Joe is running around doing whatever, and he's like, I'm determined to figure out what's going on. He's a really funny character. He's got this, like, he looks like a little mouse, and he's got this mousy accent, 
and all the other all, all the other ethereal beings kind of are like, okay, buddy, okay, you go figure out what's going on with him. We don't really care. Uh, and he like sneaks into the real world and he's like tra trailing them around. But whenever he appears, there's this like do 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 this like sort of ominous like synthy uh, like almost like white lab like doctor's office-y kind of like music. It's hard to describe, but it's very like it has it's it's jazzy, but in this very like cold symphonic way that contrasts with everything going on with the other characters. The soundtrack is really good in this movie, is basically what I'm trying to say. The soundtrack does a great job of like portraying the like portraying the mood and setting the tone of the story of what of this is what's happening here versus this is what's happening here and all that. And uh it's just it's very it's I really like it. Um I just really really enjoyed it. And I don't I don't I don't want to go into like spoilers because I didn't know that I the only thing I knew about it is, you know, what happens to the main character at the beginning and I really didn't know anything else. And from there it was a really interesting ride that goes in a lot of different ways you expect. It has some really good things to say about purpose and life and how we should live life. Uh, the ending didn't quite land for me. It didn't end quite the way I expected. Uh, it ended on a very happy note, which was like good, but it was also kind of like a, it was a happy, it was a good note, but it was like a flat note. It was kind of lacking in the complexity that the rest of the movie had, at least for me. Uh, it, it ends with him being like, I'm gonna live every bit of my life. And I was like, oh, cool, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> what does that mean, especially in a time like this where we can only live so much of our lives indoors? I, I, this is a, like, a weirdly perfect Pixar movie for 2020. Uh, just like, because I feel like if there's any year where kids would start where kids and teens would be pondering existential concepts like what is the meaning of life what is it should should i have a purpose what's why am i looking for six like me things about purpose and success it's like if there's any time if there's any year that kids are gonna maybe get some of the deeper themes they're lying down it's this year it's the year <laughs> the great and glorious 2020 uh so yeah, I would if you have Disney Plus, I would recommend watching Soul. I don't know if I could really recommend going to the theater to seeing it unless you're really like comfortable going to the theater and you're like in that kind of environment, but if you're not, just wait. I mean, it's not. I'm sure I'm I'm sure you could you'll be able to get this movie on DVD in a few months, you know? But if you do have Disney Plus, uh I would recommend it. Um, maybe if you if you pick up Disney Plus for a month to watch The Mandalorian or WandaVision or whatever, go ahead and give Soul a watch, too. I think you'll find that it has some very interesting things to say. And it's very... And it's not just, it's not just like, pro interesting. It's also, like, exciting and fun. Uh, it doesn't drag. I mentioned that before, but the pacing is, like, almost perfect. The ideas it presents are really interesting, and it doesn't, like, force you to soak in to the, any of them a little too much. It kind of lets you have your own take. It's very open to interpretation. The, uh, the I really liked most of the characters. Uh, yeah. Give, give Soul a watch. I get, gets the solid Chuck Batman recommendation. Arrivederci!